The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture once again, we're pleased to have Dennis Lang, Provincial Pulse Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture and uh, Resource Development. And Dennis, uh, we've seen soybean acres, of course, a few years ago really peak in Manitoba. Now uh, this year, uh, not nearly as much excitement about uh, growing soybeans, at least they're in, going back to spring. Now at this point in the growing season, there might be a little bit more excitement about soybeans? I think most definitely. Um, you go back in time a little bit to 2016, we broke a, a record for yield in Manitoba at 42 bushels an acre. Of course, when you have those kind of numbers, those kind of yields, uh, we, tend, we saw a big increase the following year and we were at 2.3 million acres. But since then, uh, 17, 18 and good part of 19 was quite dry. And uh, with dry conditions during the pod filling stage in July and August, yields have dropped. So last year our provincial average was only 27 bushels an acre. Now that played into the acreage for this year as well. So last year we had 1.3, just over 1.3 million. This year we're just above a million acres this year. So we saw growers switch into other crops like dry edible beans. We've seen more, uh, a few more acres of canola. We saw a few more, uh, more acres of peas this year. So growers are, are switching things around just based on, on growing conditions. But the crop looks pretty good so far this year. Um, you know, we've had good rains, good timely rains. So that's going to help with yield. We're still a little ways from harvest, and uh, like I always say, it's not in the bin yet, but uh, things are looking pretty good. So come next year, we'll see how things shake loose with markets and those types of things. But I could see acres maintaining themselves and maybe even increasing to maybe that 1.3, 1.4 million acre range. That, you know, I'd probably have more information come October, November, how the crop is and stuff like that. But that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So we may have sort of established a, a floor on acres this year? I think so. I think at this point here, um, this was just a, a kind of reaction to what we've seen in the last couple of years. Growers wanted to expand into other other crops because there's been different marketing opportunities, uh, especially in dry beans and peas recently. So uh, they've kind of switched out of soybeans. And then some grow, some areas, growers have had really good success with uh, canola, in, in, especially in the West. And uh, I think in the end, uh, things will balance themselves out. So we'll see more acres of soybeans, I think, next year. Of course, when we when we bring a, a new crop, such as soybeans into uh, into new growing areas as we've seen in the last decade in in Manitoba Dennis we haven't necessarily seen all the pests that they're familiar with down in the U.S. where they've been growing soybeans for a longer time we are I guess over time starting to see some more of those pests come into the equation for growing soybeans in northern areas as well well we've seen some some reports like last year we had our first confirmed case of soybean cyst nematode in Manitoba again the um, uh, the levels are still quite low yet, but growers are really keeping an eye on that type of pest. Um, root rots, Phytophthora root rot, uh, Fusarium are always on the horizon for us. Um, we've seen some fields in the past couple of years that have been quite severe. Uh, a contributing factor to that has been rotation. You know, when soybean prices were high and acres were high, well, rotations get cut quite short. The other problem that comes along with that is when you have short rotations, uh, we've seen more cases of uh, kosher resistance to glyphosate in Manitoba as well, and again, related a lot in, in the soybean fields. Um, we've had some water hemp being reported as well in Manitoba as well. Um, so those are some of the pests that growers have to really be pay attention to. And I think probably one of the important things is if you're, if you're growing a new crop or if you've been growing it for a few years, do some field scouting, especially at this time of the year. I think, you know, we always try to encourage growers to scout for weeds during the growing season. But really keep an eye open at this time of the year for weird and wonderful patches that you might see in your field. Uh, if you have the time, get out and dig up a few plants, dig up the roots and see what the roots look like and see if there's anything to be of concern. Um, at this stage of the game, we're going to see some yellowing in the plants like we see here. That's natural senescence. But anything weird and wonderful that you see in the field, maybe take a note of that. You know, if you're unsure what it is, if it's a weed problem, call you know one of our extension people that are out there or, or one of the retailers that are out there and have them have a look at it just because if if it's a weed issue you know that is a resistant weed issue and those plants are small you can deal with it now deal with it when the plants are small so it, we don't run into the same problem as they have in uh, in north dakota where you have kosher resistant uh, plants to glyphosate that are taller than i am 
So those are some of the things you have to try to do as you with any crop, but especially in soybeans, if your if your rotation's been tight, some of the things you really have to consider. Yeah, and and speaking of rotation, that goes both ways. We did maybe see soybean rotation get a little bit tight, but now with the pullback in acres, there might be growers that there's pressure to put soybeans back in the rotation because they've gone to maybe canola and wheat or, yeah. or some of the other the rotations gotten soybeans have been taken out yeah and those are some of the, all the factors that you have to really look at and and again anytime you you bring a crop back into rotation one of the one of the things i always um uh, talk to growers about when you're looking at bringing a new crop in or especially if it's a new piece of land really check the herbicide records on that field from the previous uh, just to make sure that there's no issues that may arise we've i've had some some uh, instances this year where uh, extend was used on a crop last year or dicamba was used last year um, and everybody would have thought wow we had lots of rain in, in september and that would have taken care of all the problem problem is that rain came so late and it really didn't have a chance to break down so now when they put soybeans in conventional soybeans in it this year all of a sudden part way through the season you get these weird and wonderful looking plants in the field and you're like well what's going on it looks like chemical drift and then you do some further exploration and you see that maybe there is some residue that was left over that growers didn't think would be a problem but it seems to be a, a small problem this year so definitely check your herbicide records when you're when you're pulling in crop or pulling in fields that you have never used before and just to make sure there's no issues there with what you're putting on the crop for this year so okay overall then just to wrap up Dennis would it be fair to kind of describe the soybean uh, industry in, in Manitoba as having kind of matured over the last five to five years maybe uh, to, it, a, to a point but I think we're always still learning okay. I think uh, when we first started growing soybeans, it was the Cinderella crop. You know, we, you know, you basically put it in the ground, you spray it twice, and and you just kind of walk away from it till harvest time. Now we're dealing with a few other issues with weed resistance issues. Uh, we're dealing with maybe some uh, poor stands and we're possibly some SCN moving in. And that's just normal for a crop when you have more acres of it. So I think you, you always need to pay attention to what's happening out there. And, you know, uh, one the one big thing that I've always no that I've noticed when I've been looking through all the yield data every year, that growers are really picked up on the maturity side of things and really focusing on varieties that are perform well in their area. And I see this by the yields in different zones and different uh, RMs that those yields are always very consistent and um, you don't see any real big wrecks unless you've had a real big weather event. So that, that's a real positive from my, on, from my end. All right. Thanks for your time, Dennis. Thank you.